Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a double diamond. So you want to start by smoothing out all the wrinkles in your shirt, and then you want to center your shirt using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. So what I'm going to do is use a washable marker to mark out my center points, and then I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve, line up all the seams in the underarm and along the shoulder and wherever else there are seams, and then I'm going to take those little marks that I made and give them a pinch, shake the shirt out a little bit, and then smooth it out the best that I can, bringing the back of the shirt and the front of the shirt together, and that creates symmetry. That way your saturation is the same on the front side and the back side. Today's project is a Bella canvas shirt and it's a soft style shirt. So it reminds me a lot of Walmart George brand shirts, if you guys are familiar with those. And I'm not even sure if it's a George brand. So if you're in Walmart and you're up close to like the grocery checkout or whatever where the clothes are and they have, you know, stacks of t-shirts, that's what they remind me of. And those shirts are made out of polyester or like a polyester cotton blend. This one is 100% cotton, but it feels exactly the same. So for this particular shirt, I wasn't exactly sure what I was doing. I was just kind of messing around with it, trying to figure it out. So I'm just going to let you watch it play out. I think it's gonna be a lot easier than me trying to explain what I'm doing. Next, I'm going to mark out my pattern. So using my yardstick and a washable marker, I'm going to mark out the diamond. And to create the diamond, you want to go over the center point. If you wanted to create an X, you would go from the center point up over the shoulder. And I like to go out every four inches. It's just like a magic number for me. Um, not a necessary step, but I find it really useful when it comes to pleating. As I mentioned a minute ago, this shirt is just one of those things where I was just kind of like winging it. And I did not like the fact that the sleeve of the shirt was on top for the pleating because I want it to be all tucked in and buttoned up. So now I'm just going to refold the shirt. And then I'm going to pleat along those lines that I created. So now you want to pleat along these lines and it's a really thick fold so I have found that by sliding the yardstick up underneath it and turning it up on its side it creates one inch pleats and starting in the center is easier for me so I start in the center and work my way out. I'm going to secure this project by using rubber bands. You could also use kite string if you prefer it, but rubber bands are just quick and easy. And these are my second favorite rubber bands, and I have a link for them down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie-dye, so go ahead and check it out. And I also use my tiny little baby hair rubber bands, which there is a link for those down below, but I usually just pick them up at Walmart every time I go, which isn't very often, but you know, they're like a buck. I think you can also get them at the dollar store.
This project is going to be an incline ice die, so I'm going to place it down inside of a gutter. And I'm going to create a moat out of foil. And I learned this tip from watching Greg over at Goyo's Garden and Tie Dye. I used to use my dye towel, which worked great, but then I would have to go and wash my dye towel. This way I can just toss this little foil piece out. And it's great because it catches all the ice, that way you don't have to fill up the entire bottom of the gutter with ice, wasting your ice. And after you do this a couple of times, you'll see exactly what I mean. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. And I did not mark out my pattern this time like I normally do. As I mentioned, I'm winging it. All I really knew is that I wanted to create a rainbow and I wanted to use a lot of colors. So what I decided to do was use a dark tone and a light tone of each color. So I started with the red violet and then I did the jungle red and then I'm going to do the golden yellow and then the citrus yellow and just so on like that and we'll see what happens. We have a moment while you watch me add the dye. So there, I have a couple things. So first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that has subscribed to the channel, that's been following along and supporting since the beginning, and to all the new people that are here. You know, thank you for subscribing. I hit 16,000 subscribers, and that's amazing. And I, I feel so grateful. When I started this, you know, I had hoped that it would be a success. But you know, you'd never know where things are going to go. And I've put a lot of work and effort into it and I couldn't have done it without you guys following along and being supportive. So thank you so very much. And then I also just wanna mention the Facebook group. Um, there are a lot of wonderful people in that group sharing their tips and tricks and it's just a great resource. So the group name is Belladonna Dyes Community Tie Dye Group and there is a link for it down below in the description box. It's right underneath the Etsy link. So, you know, check it out, become a member. All I ask is that you agree to the group rules. So you need to click agree and I will let you in. If you don't, I'm going to decline your request. And then when you're in the group, be respectful to each other. This is art. So if you don't like the way, you know, somebody has done something or the colors that they've used or something, um, if you have a negative comment, please just keep it to yourself. You know, you have to consider the person that has made it. If they're sharing it, it's because they love it and they want to share with you. Or if they're asking a question or if they're using tulip tie dyes, leave it. You know, um, everybody has their own pace at which they learn and, you know, we need to support one another. I want everybody to have fun in the group and feel welcomed and comfortable. So, okay, that's my soapbox. Next, I give my project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. We're going to be adding quite a bit of ice to the project, so you wanna make sure that the pH stays up around 10.5 to 11. And then I add my ice. And I like to add enough ice to where all of the ice is coming in contact with the shirt, and basically it just fills up the gutter. And I have found that if you add your ice to the gutter while it's laying flat, it's a lot easier because it doesn't roll downhill knocking dye everywhere. Now here I'm creating the incline. So I have one end of the gutter up over the tote and the other gutter or the bottom of the gutter down inside the tote. And that's going to create the nice streaks down the pattern.
It's recommended that you let your project batch for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. For this particular project, I let it batch for the full 48 hours. Now it's time for the rinse out, and you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the shirt, and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. The reason you wanna get the soda ash out of your shirt is because you don't want the dark colors to redeposit onto your light colors. From here, I take it to the washing machine, and I usually do about two hot water cycles using Kirillon. Kirillon is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And then I do a third and final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And I do have the links for them down below in the description box. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our double diamond incline ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And I really like the pattern on this one a lot. There's a lot going on and I think it's really pretty. One thing though that is bothering me is the actual shirt itself, the material of it. The last one I did was the kaleidoscope and it took me a while to warm up to that shirt. The colors just don't have the same vibrancy that I'm used to when I use a Gildan shirt. Um, there's something about the sheen on this shirt. Uh, it's just, it's different than what I'm used to. So I wonder had I done this exact same shirt on a Gildan and did a side by side, you know, if there would be a difference. Because I'm not used to the, like the dye looking speckly. The flows on this just don't seem to be what I'm used to. So I'm, I'm blaming the shirt. Now, I guess it could be, you know, user error on this one, but I did the process the same way I do for all of my shirts, and they usually turn out so much more vibrant and just dynamic. Uh, it, it could be the color combination. I mean, who knows? Generally speaking, though, overall, I'm happy with this shirt, and I'm going to play around with it a lot more. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.